somebody said to me, they don't need anyone. And I said, you know what? I used to think that as well. But then I came to the realization that everything I have, everything that I touch, I have it because I needed someone to deliver it to me. See, you see the postman, you see the mail carrier when they show up at your house. You see the UPS driver, you see the FedEx driver, you see the Amazon driver. But it never crosses your mind that the same rig that brought those goods in, you pass it on the highway and cussed him out for hogging up the highway. No man is an island. And so if you think you can navigate this life alone, you think you can navigate this life without the assistance of others, man, you lost it. That's not the way it is. That's not the way it's going to be. So let's keep this in mind. For you to exist in this world alone, that means you know everything. And let me tell you something. You don't know everything. So you're going to need other brains around you all the time. There's always some information you're going to need to get from somewhere else. See, we live in such a computerized world, such a technological world that we believe when we go to Google, we're just dealing with a computer. Okay, uh, we're just dealing with our computer. We're just dealing with the Internet. No, what you're dealing with is information that someone put there. To think that we're going to be in this world alone and we don't need anyone. Well, what's the big complaint about AI? Go ahead and let AI take over and replace us all then. Why don't you? You know what? You're not going to do that. Because you don't want to be in a world where you're all alone and the owner of the intelligence is artificial. None of us want that. I don't want it. None of us should want it. So even when you hear a woman say, I don't need no man. Yes, you do. When you hear a man say, I don't need no woman. Yes, you do. If you're a man and you think you don't need a woman ever at all for nothing, man, you lost. What's your purpose for being created? Why did God create man and woman, male and female? The mindset that you don't need anyone is idiot talk. How are you going to navigate the world and you can't, and with nobody to watch your back? You can't watch your back and your front simultaneously. You can't sleep and be on the lookout at the same time. Let me tell you something. If you want a brand new car, you can't even sell yourself a brand new car. Think about when you buy a new car. When you buy a new car, you have to go to a dealer. Or you have to deal with someone who has a dealer's license in order to get that vehicle. You can't just walk into the manufacturing plant and say, hey, I want that one. No, there has to be an intermediary. In every facet of life, there has to be an intermediary. Let me tell you something. You can't even go see a specialist in most places. Why? Because you have to go see your primary care physician first and you have to get a referral to a specialist. The specialists don't want to see you until your primary care doctor has done everything that they know how to do. Especially here in America, when you look at how with the foods we eat, how they destroy, how, how they cause tooth decay and all type of oral hygiene issues. You mean to tell me you're going to take care of that yourself? You're going to pull your own tooth out? I had a cousin who would pull his own tooth out with his bare hand. But are you going to do that? Man, when truck drivers... With just uh, look around your house. I want everybody to take a stop right now and look around your house. I want you to look at everything from your underwear to the dishes in your cupboard, to the refrigerator, to the food in the refrigerator, your television, your cell phone, your sofa, your bed, this dashiki, this turban, this microphone, that camera. This Helios Predator 300, that MacBook Pro, this mix, this Mixcast 4, the lights that are lighting me right now, this pencil, all of these things at some point were on a truck with one man driving it, possibly from California to Georgia or even California to Florida. We always say teachers are underpaid. I agree, they are. Up to a certain grade level anyway. Teachers K through 8 are underpaid. 9 through 12, I'm going to be honest with you. If it wasn't for the need to go to university, those years are irrelevant. Just my opinion. 
You can't watch your own back and front simultaneously, so you need another set of eyes. Look at the ease with which we live. We just go on Amazon, we see something we want, and we order it, it shows up. Look at when the pandemic hit. Look at how all those goods were stuck at all of those, those ports. Do you know how many people made a nice chunk of bread getting, I mean, newly getting into trucking at that point? There was so much money out there to be made. Why? Because trucking was the most important profession around, but it always has been during our lifetime. During our lifetime, the one industry that can shut down everything is the trucking industry. And we saw that. Goods were backed up because there was no, what? Ground transport. Not air transport, ground transport. So if we need a stranger in a truck that bad, how are you going to live your life talking about you don't need nobody? God works through people. So without people, there is no room for God to even work in your life. None of us can navigate this society alone. We need to be alone in very brief spurts. When I took the vow of Nazarite, I was alone. Whenever you're trying to elevate in life and move up from the level that you've been existing on for so long, you have to separate. Separation is elevation, but when you get to the next level, then there is no need for separation anymore. You have already separated. You're not trying to separate from everybody on every level. You're trying to separate from the point when it's time to make a change in your life. Then when you get to that next level, you need people who are experienced on that level. The problem is most people aren't reliable or dependable. So people can't rely on you. People can't depend on you. So you don't depend on other people. Because let me tell you something, man. If you're cutthroat, you don't trust nobody else because you believe everybody cutthroat too. We know what karma is. We know that the energy you put out into the world is the energy that you're going to get back. We know that. It's like if we spend time enjoying the company of a woman and then we say we don't need the woman. Oh, yes, you do. Whatever, you, whatever enjoyment you got from her company, whatever peace you got from her company, whatever fun you had in her company, you needed that. It benefited your life in a certain way. Ain't a woman who can barely afford to take herself to the Cheesecake Factory and get to go to Cheesecake Factory on somebody else's dime. Hey, man, that's a come up for her. If she says she don't need nobody, she's not being honest. Support is necessary in every facet of life. And guess who provides support? People. Everybody needs somebody. Stick a one in the chat right now, man, if you don't need nobody. If you don't need nobody, stick a one in the chat. Man, if something happened to your car, man, your car cut off, you got to call roadside assistance. Guess what? Somebody got to show up in the record. SJ3, salute, my brother. Salute. Appreciate the dime, brother. Salute to the realists of the real. Salute to you, man. Salute to you. I have no idea, man, how I ended up uh, leaving this thing on, um, putting this thing on the, on the BOA channel, but it's working out the way it's supposed to work out. Man, let me tell y'all something. At every point in life, and I'm, a, I'm just going to be honest with you, whenever you make strides in life, whenever you accomplish certain things in life, yes, you can enjoy it by yourself, but I promise you, having people to enjoy the progress with, having people to celebrate the progress with, it is a much better experience. So yes, you may say you don't need people in that environment, but what is our goal? Our goal is to get the fullness of life. Our goal is to enjoy the fullness of life, get the full experience, the full joy, the full peace, the full happiness, the full experience. That's our, that's our goal in life. So if you're experiencing something and it's not, you're not experiencing it in the most optim, optimal manner, then what are you doing? Like, it, it's not the same. Living check to check, Barely being able to pay your bills ain't the same as paying all your bills and having a little money to play with, a little money to invest, a little money to do, with, to do some thing you want to do with. That's not the same. A little money to save, invest, and play with, man, that's not the same. So let's stop acting like all these levels of life are the same. And I'm going to be honest with you, you can't attain any level of success in this life without relying on people. We don't live in a world where you don't have to rely on anyone. We look at some of the wealthiest people around. We look at Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos relies on all of us to be on Amazon, right? And I'm going to be honest with you, he's made it such, such an such a optimally performing platform that we go there. Why do we go there? Because it's quick, it's easy, and you get your, you get your, goods, you get your goods on time. Quicker than you can get them anywhere else. But without us logging into it, doing what we do, he wouldn't be able to make it.
So when you look at that, everyone needs someone. We need the input of people, man. Now let me tell y'all something, man. I got a bunch of partners, man, that have been truck drivers for a long time, brother. A long time. I mean, I got a bunch of partners that have been truck driver, man, 20, 25 years. And when I think about the amount of people whose life who, who, they, they affected in a positive manner, you know, who's you think about people who 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 sick and they're on the CPAP machine, you know, or, you know, they need to get their insulin and they need boy, there's some people around here, man, that would not be in good shape if it weren't for truckers. All of us would suffer, but there's some people around here who wouldn't be able to live without truckers doing what they're doing, man. So when I'm somewhere, dog, if I if I'm traveling, man, I pull up at a truck stop. I mean, I rarely travel like that now. I'm always in the air now. But when I do, when I decide I want to take a road trip, man, I pull up at the truck stop, bro. If I'm in there, man, and I go over there, I'll, I'll just go over to the restaurant, man, just to see. I see some truck drivers in there, man, chilling, man. I go up to the counter, man, and tell the, uh, tell the waitress, hey, look, those guys over there, they meal is on me. Just, you know, go ahead and run their tab, and, and I'll pay for it right now. You know what I'm saying? I'll do that. And or... I'll just go over there to the guys. Man, they proud men, so they don't want you to be just giving them money. And she's like, real men don't want men to give them money. Like, we don't function like that. That's how women function. But, you know, I'll do that for them, man. And, uh, you know, it just, for me, that's the least I could do to show my appreciation because one of those guys might have gotten me something very important before. You just never know what truck, what you need is on, man. And so, and it's not an easy job, bro. Let me tell you something, man. I used to drive everywhere. So, I used to take 14-hour drives to Miami, straight shot. You know what I'm saying? Like straight shot, no, no spending the night nowhere, straight shot, 14 hours, bam. Now, now regularly, man, listen, man, I, 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 man, I scoot over to ATL, man. I'm, I'm, man I'm, look, I'm six hours away from ATL, man. I scoot over to ATL, man, like it ain't nothing. Dallas, scoot, I'm about the same distance from Dallas. Man, I scoot over to Dallas like it ain't nothing. It's just a hop, skip, and a jump, dog. You know what I'm saying? Beham, I shoot the Beham, and Beham right around the corner. You understand? But I'm going to tell you, that trip to Miami, those 14 hours, boy. And see, I'm in a car. I'm in a vehicle. So I get the opportunity to stop, stretch my legs. Of course, I got I, I to gotta gas up there. So I get to stretch my legs, man. We get to get me a bite to eat, get to do all of that, man. Get me, man, them boys ain't stopping nowhere but their truck stops. Ain't nowhere else they can stop. And so, boy, that's a tough job to do. And with me, I'm traveling for fun. They got to get goods to a certain place at a certain time because keeping the wheels turning is how they make their money. They got to keep the wheels turning. If you ain't keeping the wheels turning, man, you, I don't know what you're doing. You ain't making no money, you're keeping the wheel turning. I would say to a young man right now, if you're a young man and you just getting into trucking, you ain't got no family, don't get no family. If you got a girlfriend, drop her ass. Let me tell you what you do. If you just getting into trucking, man, don't even have no apartment, no nothing. Keep them wheels turning. You know what I'm saying? They got everything you need at these modern truck stops, boy. They got everything you need. You know what I'm saying? You run up in a Bucky's, man. You run up in a you run up in a quick trip, man. They got everything you need, bro. I'm telling you, they got everything you need. So you go in there, man. You can hit a shower, man. You know they got they got these other the mom and pop truck stops, man. They got you know everything in there, man. They got recliners, man. You can you know you can go in there, man, and, and sit down and massage your back, man. If you've been driving for a minute, man, go in there, man. Wait for your shower to get ready, man. They got a restaurant in there you can eat in, man. They got all the all the equipment you gonna ever need in there, man. Clothes and everything. So man, I would say, man, get on the road. Keep them wheel turning, man, for for at least a year. I say two years, man. Keep them wheel turning for a couple years, man. Cause I'm gonna be honest with you. You're gonna be doing the world a great service, bro. I'm pr I promise you, man. Nobody out here is needed like truck drivers, bro. Nobody out here is needed like truck drivers, man. Yeah, because I'm telling you, man, listen. I had uh my aunt, man, my mom's uh my mom's sister. She was married to a guy, man, and uh he uh he died on the road, man. This was back in the day before they put the limit on the driving. Like back in the day, you could just roll. You know, there was a time where you didn't have you didn't have to log. You didn't have to be eight hours on and then eight out. You didn't have to do that. You could just roll. And those guys were see that was back in the day. Back man, back in the day, man, that truck driving money, boy, that, it was it was a different type of money back in the day because there were no limits on how long you could drive. Like you could just drive. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of boys, man, were losing their lives on the highway, man. My um. 
my uh, my aunt's husband, man, he uh, him and another guy, man, they were on opposite sides of a of a, of a highway. You know, they were down in them country town, man. You get this on no country town, man. These two big trucks, they got to be riding on. You know, uh, it's a four lane, but it's really not a four lane because they're real skinny, man. Them boys on there, man, and they are uh, they both went to sleep, man. Like they both went to sleep, and just veered across the lane and just smashed head on into each other, man. Uh, I was riding another time, man. I think I was uh. I think I was on my, I may, I may have been on my way to uh, Kenner, Louisiana, man. I think I was on my way to Kenner, Louisiana, and uh saw uh, another guy, man. He had smashed into a truck, man, whole cab, man, just was was cinched. You know, he was cinched. The whole cab, man, was just black, smoked up, man. I know the way he hit it, the way that cab smashed in, man, he, man, he, ain't, he probably didn't even wake up. You know what I'm saying? That thing, when he hit it, that thing just went up in flames, man. Like, it, it was, it was burnt to a crisp, man. You know what I'm saying? And that just come from, it's a tough job, man, being on that road. Yeah, solitude is good, but being on that road like that, man, trying to meet them deadlines and that solitude, boy, that shit a tough job, man. So for me, I, I give a I give a 100% shout out, man, to all the truck drivers out there, dog, because I'm going to be honest with you, man, it's a hell of a thing, man. You know, now you can, now I know a couple of guys, man, that, um, you know, they take their old lady out there with them, man. One of them, man, is old lady driver too, man. So they're, they're a tandem driver, man. You know, they're, they're, they're a team. And um, you know, they they finally got a rig too, man. So, you know, they own the operator right now, man. They just stay on the road. You know what I mean? They don't have no kids, dog. They just on the road all the time. They on the road. You know what I mean? And so uh, you know, it's it's one of those things, man. Well, it's it's a life, man. It's a life that you got to be dedicated to because it's not an easy life, man. Being on that road, being a truck driver, boy, that shit ain't easy, man. So every time I think about anything that I have, man, I always say, man, it's a truck driver that brought this to me, man. You know what I'm saying? The D glasses right here, man. These expensive ass glasses. Yeah. Truck driver, man, has something to do with these things getting to me, man. And so I want y'all to understand that whenever you think you don't need nobody, I want you to humble yourself and think about how much different your life would be if not for a trucker somewhere that was willing to get on that road, man, and run up and down that road and deal with them fucking them, 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 them scales, man. Boy, let me tell you something. I don't even drive trucks and it irks me. When they say all trucks must enter a way station, and then you see a line of trucks lined up on the side of the highway, man, waiting to go into the way station, man. Boy, let me tell you something, man. I, I had to deal with that one time, man, when I was in, uh, when I was in college, man. I, uh, uh, I worked at a furniture store, man, a high-end furniture store, man. I'm talking about $8,000 beds, $12,000 dining tables, that type of thing where people who just got too much money to spend and uh. Man, we were, we were, I think we were going to Atlanta, man. Uh, we, we were taking a load from Birmingham to Atlanta, man. And, uh, and we weren't even in a big truck, man. We was like in a little box truck. This lady had about a mirror and a, and a coffee table, man, that cost about $7,000. And so we were just running it over there. Man, we was in a, uh, like a box truck. Man, you know them people, man, whooped up on us, man, in, in, uh, in one of them DOT trucks, man, and jumped out, man, and had some portable scales, man. Whooped up, man, made up, run across them damn portable scales, man. I like, bro, we, ain't, we got a mirror and a coffee table in here. He ain't want hear it, man. Pull it over to the side of the road, man. We had to come, we had to go across the scale. Man, I was like, man, ain't this something? Then I said, man, man, these truck driver guys, they got to deal with that type of stuff all the time, man, bro. Let me tell y'all boys something, man. I ain't got nothing but respect for y'all, man, for... For being on that road in them trucks, dog. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I know you enjoy the solitude, you enjoy the peace of mind, but man, that's a grind, boy. Cause I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't care who you are. You get to driving. If you just a regular driver, man, you get in about four, four to six hours. Boy, that driving get hectic at that point. It gets hectic at that point, man. And you know, and then even now, let's say you a guy that can stay awake 10 or 12 hours. They make, if you got to cap your driving at eight hours, man, you can't even, they, they killing your potential, man. Then you, 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 you literally have your logs literally have to show that you're off. And now they got these computerized logs, man, technology, nobody writing their logs down anymore. So, I mean, you just, Hey man, you logging on, logging off. So they know when you're driving, know when you're not driving, man. So now, even with that, man, even with all the control mechanisms that taking over the industry, man, let me tell you something, boy, I ain't got nothing, but I ain't got nothing but respect for y'all, man. Cause I'm gonna be honest with you. Without truck drivers, we would all be lost and be without so much of our goods and services, man. Like, never take for granted that you need someone. Man, when I think about truck driving, everybody in my life, man, that I need, boy, I tell them. When I get through with this show, I'm finna, I'm finna let everybody in my life that I need let them know. Hey, I appreciate you. 
Appreciate you. Don't know why I'd be without you. Don't know why I'd be without you. I'm telling you, man, I need you. I need you up in this place. And that's what I do, man. So I want y'all to remember, man, that. And, and listen, you look at truck driver. Even when you talk about cops, people talk about cops. But until you need them to solve your crimes against you and your family. Then all of a sudden, hey, man, hey, hey man, hey, man, y'all, y'all get them as quick as y'all can, man. We need to get our stuff back. You see what I mean? All right. Oh, all right. What's call to say? Uh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. 14 hours on duty, 11 hours to drive. Okay. Cool. 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 All right. 11 hours ain't bad, man. That, that's, a, that's a nice run. I thought it was eight, man. Somebody told. No, nah, no. Nah, I, I, I thought it was 10. I thought it was 10 on, and then you got to be off for eight. I, I don't know why I thought that, but that's what I thought it was. I thought it was you could drive for 10, then you got to be off eight hours before you can drive again. But 14 hours on duty, 11 hours to drive, man, that ain't bad, man. That ain't bad. 700 miles, man, that ain't bad. That ain't bad. Actually, so I take back what I said. I think that's a pretty fair limit, man. I, I, think, I think you can move and groove with that. That's a pretty fair limit, man. P.I. Jackson, appreciate the dub. Ain't no way on God green earth I'm not hitting the tip jaw on this one. Man, appreciate it, bro. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. You know, man, the thing is, bro, I'm going to be honest with y'all, man. We live in a world where what you do is minimized. So you meet a woman and she's looking at you and she's saying that you don't make enough money. Well, here's the problem. You can't gauge the significance of your work, any work you do, about how much money you make. You just can't gauge it by that. You can't say, okay, because I don't make that, about, I, because I don't make 200000 a year, then I'm not a high-value man. If you drive a truck, you're instantly a high-value man because value is not just about finances. It's really not. You, you're a fool. As a man, you're a fool if you just value yourself based on how much money you make. Yeah, you got to make money. You got to eat. You got to be able to put a little something back. You got to be able to invest a little something. You know, you got responsibilities you got to take care of. Yeah, you, then you got to be able to ball on a budget however much you want to ball on a budget. But I say this, that's not the reason that your job has value. That's not the reason that you have value to the world. The same woman who would tell you that as a truck driver, you're not a high value man. She probably just got through complaining about some. They told her it was going to be there Wednesday, but it ain't going to be there till Thursday. Or she probably just got, you know, a, a pleasant surprise by some that they told her was going to be there Thursday and it showed up Wednesday morning. So you can't let people tell you about the value of what you do when they are benefiting from the value of what you do. So I'm telling you, man, I still believe that truck driving, man, is a phenomenal field to get in, man. Anything in logistics, man, I think is a phenomenal industry to get in. Uh, man, I, I, that was a time man, I was actually talking about. I actually thought about, man, just getting the CDL, buying me a rig, man, and just hit the road, man. Just be an own operator, man. Hit the road, man, with a, you know, with a with a dedicated gig, man, dedicated run, and um. I thought about doing that, man. You know what I'm saying? Just just to just to be out there moving around, the freedom of it, bro. The freedom of, of moving around, man. And uh I do it now, man. And then still, man, come on the thing, man. Go live, man, about two, three times a week. I still do it. So I want y'all to understand, man, that the when you don't value other people, that's why there's this big push against anything that resembles anything like love. Man, let me tell y'all something, bro. Yeah, some of y'all young, some of y'all real young. But, man, I grew up watching, you know, some, I grew up watching some grandparents, man, that, that, that loved each other, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I got some uncles and aunts, man, that love each other, bro. Like, I've seen it. I've seen what it is for two people to live and need each other because they are happy together, happier together than they would be apart. I've seen that. Now, I don't know if many of you guys haven't seen that, but what, I, but what I try to get you to understand is that's a possible thing to do. You just have to get the, the woman with the right characteristics. Wherever you have to go in the world to get that, then there's a woman out there with the right characteristics to make that work. But it's just like everything else. You got to know who you can depend on by being dependable. See, here's how you know who you can depend on. When you're dependable, you, got, you have to see how people respond to you being dependable. 
if they don't appreciate it, they're not dependable. Everybody who's dependable, everybody who's reliable, everybody that you can safely need, safely lean on, they appreciate the fact that you're the same way because they know that there aren't many people that you can depend on like that. There aren't many people you can rely on like that. You dig what I'm saying? And I think we all should keep that in mind. So you have to be someone your loved ones and the people that depend on you can safely depend on. It's not about what other people are going to do, other people being reliable, other people being dependable. As men of God, as stand-up men, as alpha men, we are going to be reliable and dependable in the ways that we're going to be reliable and dependable. Now, I'm not saying that anybody can just call you and get whatever they want. That's not dependable or reliable. That's being gullible. I'm talking about in the ways that you present yourself as dependable, you have to stick to those ways because that's what it means to be a stand-up guy. And, you, and, and when you look at truck drivers, they're stand-up guys. You know why? Because those wheels have to keep turning. Bro, you got to be dedicated to being a truck driver. I'm telling you like this, man. If you're if you just trying to get into truck driving, man, and you are not dedicated to it, you're not a hustler, you're not going to grind, and it's not a passion that you have, don't get on the road. Let somebody who has a passion for it get on the road because it's going to it's going to take somebody who has a passion for it, man. But if you have a passion for it, man, man, get out there on that road, man. There is never going to be a time where truck drivers are needed. Let me tell you something. Not in our lifetime. If you're alive right now, there's never going to be a time where there's a robot truck driver to take your place. Not not in your lifetime. It may be, but it's going to be it's going to be at least 100 years from now. We're a long way from from from. Robot truck drivers being able to take take a take a route from Miami to New York. We're a long way from that. A long way from it. Coconut water, man. Coconut water. Unsweetened, no sugar added. So I say this, man. The fact that everybody needs somebody is a mindset that we should all have. Because I'm going to be honest with you, brothers, and I ain't going to lie to you. Yes, I can clean up for myself. Yes. I can cook for myself. Yes. I can do my own laundry. Yes. I can do all of these things. I do all of these things. But for me to say that I don't enjoy the experience of having a woman around, even temporarily, to do those things for a few days, I will be lying. Because if those things are being taken care of by someone else, then I can spend that time focusing on grinding. You understand? So even that little sample size is something to appreciate. Everything is something to appreciate, man, because let me tell you something. No matter how great you think you are, no matter how wonderful you think you are, that doesn't guarantee you any certain result in this world. Part of their result is still a blessing. Part of their result is still the most high seen fit to give you the thing that you want. Part of it is still that because there's a bunch of men out here that's getting it. Bunch of men out who got their stuff together. Bunch of men out who who living the life that they're supposed to be living. And they still ain't getting the results that you're getting in every area. So some of that, man, you got to give some glory to the most high. And let me tell you something, brothers. If you put God first in all you do, then you understand that everybody needs somebody. Because God works through people. And as I said earlier, without people, there's no room for God to work in your life. It's going to always work through people. I took the vow to Nazareth because a partner of mine pointed out, man, I wasn't supposed to eat pork. I said, man, I'm not Muslim. He said, man, that's in the Bible. I said, no, it's not. He showed it to me. You know what I said? Yes, it is. That's the only word he ever said to me about it. That was it. Within a month, I was on the vow to Nazareth. See, if not for that bit of information put on my brain, I probably wouldn't have taken the vitamin as right. Not at that point. I wasn't on that, man. I was getting money. I was about getting money. That's what I was about. You know what I'm saying? I was about getting money. I was about getting money, looking good, feeling good, man, knocking down bad bras. That's what I was about. I ain't bring no stack to nobody, but don't bring none to me. I ain't going to start in that with you, but if you start with me, I'm going to end it. Guarantee you that. So, 
just that little tidbit of information just goes to show, man, like when I say you need somebody, everybody needs somebody. I'm not talking about you got to rely on people to eat and you can't take care of yourself. I'm talking about every little change you make in life. Someone else is involved in that change. And I want y'all to understand that someone else is involved in that change. Yeah. And that, that's what, and that's one thing about it, man. That's one thing about it, man. It's very difficult. MPI says some dope here, man. It's very difficult to stay lean and eat clean while you're driving over the road. It's tough, man. It, it's, it's a tough thing to do. So I say it's, you know, it's, it's doable, but it's tough because you have to, for me, it will be easy because certain things I don't eat anyway. I'm not going to go nowhere and eat no burger. I'm not going to eat no, I'm not going to eat no, no, I'm not going to eat no beef. I'm not going to eat no pork. I'm not going to eat no chicken. I'm not, I'm not gonna, certain things I'm not going to do. You know what I'm saying? Certain things I'm not going to eat. Now I will eat a chicken if I raise it in my yard. But the way it's processed now, and they, they put arsenic and all that crazy stuff in the, in the chicken feed and all that, man, I ain't got time for that. You know, the things they give them for, you know, the antibiotics they give them, man, to keep them from, you know, uh, we ain't going to talk about that right here, but no, nah, I, I ain't going to eat it. But, so it would be easy for me. It would be easy for me as far as not eating the stuff that's available. What would be hard is getting the stuff that is available because you got to remember, you're still in the 18 wheeler, but man, I'm telling you what I do, man. Man, I'll be pulling up at public, I'll be pulling up in the public's parking lot, man. Pulling up in there, man, running in that store, man. I keep my cooler. I keep a cool in the wheel with me, man. I keep, I keep my fruit in my cooler, man. I, I keep my, I keep my, my coconut water in my cooler, man. I keep me some salad stuff in there, man. I stay equipped. I'm telling you, I stay equipped. I, I have, I, I can, I can blow ten minutes to run into it, to run into a grocery store every now and then, bro. And I do that. You know what I'm saying? So I say. That's one of the toughest things to do to be able to stay in shape and stay fit while you're on the road, man. Um, I would say if you're on the road, man, what you the number the one thing you can do is you can get your water. So I say if you're on that road rolling like that, man, you know, man, hey man, you might have to have your you might have to have you a cup in there, man. You might have to have your bar in there, man, or, or or get you a little kitty pot or something in there, man, so you ain't gotta keep stopping using the bathroom, bro. But you can get you can get that water. And after a while, the water don't make you, it don't make you have, have to make our, have to take our restroom runs that much once you get used to it. But if you don't do nothing else, man, you can get that water. So I would say if you're a truck driver right now, make sure you get your water every day. Get your water every day. And uh, see, I like when people say things like this. Somebody came and said, they thought Jesus said all meat is clean. Well, tell your grandma that when she go to the doctor and they tell her she got diabetes and high blood pressure and they tell her she got to stop eating red meat. And technically, and technically speaking, that, that passage was not about meat. It was about letting someone know. It was about letting Paul know that you can go preach to everybody. Was it Paul or Peter? One of them. You could go preach to everybody. You say, man, I ain't going to preach to the Gentiles, man. I'm just going to preach to the Jews. That, that, was, that was symbolic. It wasn't about meat per se. It was symbolic. But the thing is, you, you got to think about the reality of the world. The reality of the world is if you spend your whole time eating a whole bunch of pork and all that, you're going to die. Pork, that pork going to kill you. And the thing is, you know, that's not, yeah, yeah. And that's not even who said that. Like that's, no, you got to, I, I tell you what you do. When you say something like that, I want you to, I want you to go find it. And then you drop it in the chat and um, drop it in the chat for us. The verse, the verse and the chapter, you know, the book, the verse and the chapter, go dr drop it in the chat for us. And then I, I, I'll, I'll grab, I'll grab my Bible right here and we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll dive into it. Now, you know, this is King Ray Ray show, baby, we'll dive into the word. We know, you know, we'll do that now, but. I want y'all to understand, man, that you have to, you have to keep in mind that, you know, and even when it comes to that, our teeth, man, we have the teeth of carnivores. Our, our teeth are made to, to eat plants. Our digestive system, man, our, 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 our small intestine is long as hell. Like it's made to, it's made to digest and extract nutrients from plants. Like we don't even have a digestive system that can push all that meat through before it goes rancid in our guts. So yes, you can trick your body by eating a bunch of protein and look good, but I promise you, your in internally, by the time you get through doing that, internally, you're going to be trash. That goes for anybody. You know what I'm saying? There it is. Hall. Leviticus 11 tells us we need, all we need to know about diet. And here's another thing about diet. If you find something later on in any book, anywhere, that tells me to do the opposite of what Leviticus says, that's some foolishness. Anybody who said, when it comes to diet, anybody who says or indicates anything opposite of the dietary laws that God gave the children of Israel, 
Take that foolishness somewhere else. It don't make no sense. Don't believe it. Don't go for it. Let them go somewhere else. God now already told her what we need to do. You understand? We st see, we stand on principle. We, 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 stand on, we, stand on, we stand on Israelite principle. We stand on Israelite law over here. We don't go for no other stuff that tell you anything different. And anybody who does, let me ask you something, man. What you going to go for? And you know, and the bottom line is this right here, man. E even the meats that are clean, the way they're farmed and produced changes them. Let's say anything that chews grass. Of course, a cow chews grass. It chews grass. It's got a, it's got a split hoof. But the way they process them, they don't feed them grass. They feed them feed. And it's got, man, I've seen some feed with potato chips, Skittles, and peanut M&Ms in it. Because here's the thing. Cows are designed to eat. That's what they're going to do. You see them in the field, they eat. You see them in the meadow, in the pasture, they eat. You put some feed in front of them, you know what they're going to do? They're going to eat. That's just what they do. They're going to eat. But when you feed them something besides grass, it changes the lipid profile of them. And so they're not healthy anymore. So when you look at it, so even with some of the grass fed, you got to make sure when you're eating grass fed, you're eating grass fed and grass finished. Because if it's not grass finished, what happens is they feed them grass. And then two weeks before they go to slaughter, they put them in a feed lot and feed them that same crap, which takes them from being grass fed. They're not grass fed anymore. So grass fed simply means a certain percentage of their diet is grass. And they do that up until two. Man, that, and look, it's, it's a... That's a deep dive, man. We can take a deep dive so far into that, and uh, it'll change your outlook on a bunch of things that you're looking at, man. And and you see people around, man. That man, man, people eating all kinds of things, man. People eating, you know, I mean, crawdads, crawfish, shrimp, lobster, crabs, man. People eating all kind of shit, man. And, and I'm gonna tell you, the people who eat that stuff, when you look at them, they look like they eat it. They look like they eat it. It makes your skin and eyes look a certain way when you eat that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, your sweat smells a certain way when you eat that, man. Like, you're gonna have issues. You, you man, you're gonna have some, 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 either some, um, some respiratory issues or some glandular issues. You're gonna have some issues eating that because I don't know. Your issues could be many. Because all we know is the most I say, if you eat it, it'll defile your body. It'll defile your body we don't know how there's a there's a thousand ways your body can be defiled but you're gonna feel some from eating that stuff man you know what i'm so man here's what i did today man i uh, i prepared a meal man i prepared a meal man with some mackerel and um because you know i will consume small fish like small fish sardines mackerel herring those small fish that don't have mercury and um that don't and still and have a high uh omega-3 profile man so um, but I prepared a meal today, man, with that, some asparagus, some pepper, some onions, some garlic, um, diced tomatoes, man. And uh, I, so I, uh, I'm going to edit that, man. And we're going to drop that boy on Patreon, man. I'm going to start giving y'all a couple of a couple of three, maybe three meal preps a week, man, on, uh, on Patreon, man. So y'all be tuning in to that, man. Uh, real simple meal prep, just me, camera on the stove, talking through what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and explaining it to y'all, man. So it's going to be top notch, man. It's going to be top notch. So y'all be looking for it, man. So look, I ain't going to hold y'all in here long, man. I just want to come in here and slide through and do this, man. We got a show coming up this evening, man, on the BOA channel, man. We'll be back on the King Ray Ray joint tomorrow, man. Y'all be looking for it. This one right here will actually go live on the king ray ray channel so i'll leave it on the boa channel for maybe an hour but it's going to be live on the king ray ray channel so to all my truck drivers man salute to y'all man number love for y'all man y'all keep doing what you're doing man don't let nobody talk you down and talk you off the importance of what you're doing because you my sirs have and ma'ams i know some i know some women truck drivers too you my good sirs and ma'ams have one of the most important jobs in the world because even when my doctor, even when a doctor needs meds for a patient, even when they need beds for a patient, even when they need IVs for a patient, even the gowns the patient wear, even the surgical tools that the surgeon uses, at some point they were all on the truck getting to where they needed to be. So salute to the truck drivers, man. Salute to the truck drivers. And I'll say this, man. 
we got to all just always remember, man, support the truck drivers, man. You know, always remember to support the truck drivers, man. Always do that. So. Someone said, uh, let me see this. So does that mean no gelatin? It just depends, man. They use they use all type of animal bones for that. Sometimes they use cows or fish. So it just depends on what on what you use it for me. I don't understand why anybody would eat no shit like gelatin. No way. Like, why would you eat something that even looks like gelatin? Something that's prepared like gelatin. Like, why eat that? Like jello and gelatin, man, that's for kids. You know what I'm saying? Grown folks are having issue eating things like gelatin. But all they do, they just uh, they use a process to extract the distract the collagen um, out of the bones and skin and turns it into a gelatin. And man, I, I ain't eating that. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't want it. I don't want it. If I was if I was gonna do that, man, I I, I mean, I, with these animals, I wouldn't do any of it. But even if the animals were clean, man, I might eat some. I might I might consume some bone broth, but gelatin, gelatin ain't gonna do it, man. And so, and you know what the thing is, man? The thing is, you got you to gotta label read. I would say that to you. If you're a truck driver, man, we on that road, man, read the labels on everything. You know, that's a good time to become a label reader. And now you'll just get to see how many chemicals and how much other stuff is, is in this stuff, man. And, uh, you know, it's a crazy thing, man. Um, you know, so now I wouldn't eat gelatin. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I wouldn't. No way. So, <laughs> I mean, listen, I don't remember the last time I saw gelatin, man. When the last time you saw Jello or gelatin, man, I don't remember the last time I saw it. It's been a minute. Just be careful what you're eating. Just be careful what you're consuming, man. And uh, make sure that you're not wasting yourself away by putting the wrong things into your body. Just make sure that. Fear the none. Appreciate the dime, man. Appreciate the dime, fair to none. Appreciate it, man. All right, so let's get ready to get out of here, man. Let's get ready to get out of here. Hey, boy, who know about that Callaloo? Man, you, hey, hey, UK Prince, what they know about that Callaloo? Hey, what they know about that saltfish and Aki, man? What you know about the Aki and saltfish, man? What you know about it? Tell me about it. Tell me what you think about it. Don't make me throw a plantain on the side of the thing for you. They don't know about it. <laughs> hey boy hey listen man let me tell you somewhere that callaloo let me tell you something man. you get some callaloo and for me i like to eat callaloo and cabbage together like for me i just like to eat that that, that combination of of green leafies man I, I just like to eat them together but man that aki and saltfish man aki i can eat it by itself man you know what i'm saying but aki and saltfish man is top notch top notch man Oh, yeah, fried plantain, phenomenal, man. Let me tell you something. Sometimes what I do, sometimes I bake those boys, man. I, I just spray them with some cooking spray, man, just bake them. You don't, have, you don't even have to do anything to them. Like, I don't add anything to them. I just bake them. If they're, if they're really, really ripe, then I just bake them because they're already going to be super sweet. But uh, fried plantains, man, that's a delicacy, boy. That's a delicacy. And the crazy thing is, man, if you eat, if you eat from a from from a Cuban spot, so there's a spot in Buford, in, uh, in Buford, Georgia, man, if you're ever over there, man, it's called... Uh, it's called Cubano South, and I call it uh, I call it El Cubano, <laughs> but it's a spot called uh, Cubano South, man. And uh, man, listen, phenomenal, phenomenal Cuban cuisine. So you got to remember, Cuban, cu cu Cuban is Caribbean as well. But Cuban, man, I mean, when you you can get you can get plantains from a Cuban from from a Cuban spot, and then get then get plantains from a Jamaican spot. And then get plantains from a West Indian spot, and they all taste a little bit different, man. It's crazy though, but yeah, man. Listen, yeah, yeah. Listen, man. Let me tell you something, bro. It's um, yep, hard and soft call with the cabbage for sure. <laughs> hey, man, Callaloo, man, it's a phenomenal thing, man. You gotta, you gotta dive into it, man. Yeah, you gotta dive into it, man. Yeah, now you know what, man. Hey, them Cubans, they, them Cubans, man. They will, they will eat a little hog, man. But you know what? That spot. Uh, Cubano South, man, I don't think they serve any pork in there, man. I really don't. So even even with the yellow rice, you look at the yellow rice, the yellow rice, the Cuban yellow rice is different from the Jamaican yellow rice or from the West Indian yellow rice or from the even from the from the Trinidadian yellow rice. All of the yellow rice is different, man. So cu the Cuban cuisine, it has more of a Spanish kick to it. But it's still 
you know, Caribbean. Some, most of the meal, most of the, the the ingredients are, or the actual meals are very similar, but they they have a little bit more of a Spanish kick to them, man. But I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Let's get into this cuisine, man. Let's travel. Hey, listen, man. When y'all out there on them trucks, man. Man, meet your little young tender man, and uh, you know who 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 is who is who is culturally versed. And uh, man, get out there, man, and live the culture, man. Live in the world, dog. Cause I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Uh, you can uh, if you link up with the right woman, man, in these areas, bro, man, you you can you can find a bunch of gems off in these places, man, or a bunch of dope spots to go to, man. So anyway, man, let's get ready to slide on out of here, man. Let's get out to fear, man. I tell you the truth, man. Let's go tell the people that you know. Tell them to go to the King Ray Ray show, man. If you if you B L A show, go to the King Ray Ray show. Subscribe to the channel, and you no, know, don't forget to click a bell notification so you know when 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 we do this again, man. Let's slide on out of here, man. Y'all put God first. Keep grinding and growing. Remember, everybody needs somebody and truck drivers. Salute, man.